Hi everybody, and welcome to our review of Chris Calico's album "Kicking and Screaming," brought to you by the Patreon request from Ismail Gadamzi. So thanks, <laughs> Ismail. Today we'll be going through the first half of Chris Calico's album "Kicking and Screaming," track by track, giving our thoughts and opinions on every single song. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. I am your lady friend Bonnie. This is the Classic Quest Podcast, the smooth, silky show <laughs> where we go through classic hip hop albums track okay. by track, giving this our is thoughts a and late opinions night, uh, on every single radio show. So, I don't know. I was trying it up. It's all right. Well, the artist we're talking about today is Mad Versatile, so I figured I would try something out to showcase my versatility up inside of this little review over here. Okay. Um, so I'm a goofy character. <laughs> Your lady friend Bonnie's a little classier. And we wow. will be here today to talk about Chris Calico, this rap actor who delivered a great album and it was quite dapper. Anyway, um, so I'm in one of those modes and we care a lot about your comments because the truth of the matter is um, most of y'all coming through who listened to this album for the last seven years or so have a much deeper appreciation for it than, say, myself. So. I look forward to seeing what y'all want to say in response to the various commentary we choose to offer throughout this little journey we'll take together. Yeah. And we care a lot about the comments, and so we like to read our favorite comment from last week's video, where we talked about what album, Bunny? Uh, Brand Nubians, One for All. It was the second part, and we were super a little bit late, but we're getting back on track. <laughs> but still, Mr. Jonathan Barnes linked us this awesome article from the the source talking about you know the same album brand newbie and dropping it uh 29 years before and how it was one of the first albums to get a five mics by the source which is pretty cool because five mics being a classic we're the classic quest there's all sorts of links going on here but i just love the knowledge sharing or the desire to share like that and to me it's a really cool thing it's the kind of community i would like to be affiliated with so thank you mr barnes for your for sharing that with us because without people like y'all we'd be a lot more ignorant than we are today on that note we'll get into it real quick so special thanks in advance to the patrons yep. Milka Damsey, Chris Prado, Jonathan Barnes, DJ Black, Hurricane, Lindo, Williams, Coney, Sparks, and Scribble, mm. the newcomer. So, uh, yeah, thank y'all there while you're watching. Say that, and then we get into the show. Yep. Bonnie, why don't we plug that keyword one more time for the folks. Who are we talking about today? Well, um, we are doing Chris Calico's Kicking and Screaming album, which came out May 15th. 2012 which which is part of this decade because we're thinking a little it bit is part of this decade about albums that came out this decade for a list and um so i started going through the albums that came out this decade and i guess my criteria little tangent point was i had to have listened to the whole album and it had to be significant and i had to kind of like it and gosh darn it i have only found 23 albums and i'm in 2016 <laughs> and it made me realize how little i listened to music before this channel in terms of like yeah, actual and i'm albums sure that i mind. have even less than that <laughs> however <clears throat> mr tech nine chris calico's friend uh and label mate was did make that list because uh, while I never did get around to listening to Chris Calico's album, a little, little tangent on this tangent, this is the part of the show where we break down our familiarity with the artist because if we're going to talk about your favorite person, you should know where we're at in our relative fandoms and it's only fair to you. We realized that by doing this little thing at the beginning, you can know that I have never listened to a Chris Calico project in full before this, but... Yeah, me neither. I did come into this with a high level of respect for Chris Calico as a musician. However, ever, I did review Immortal with my boy Chris Chrome just very recently when it dropped the four-track EP. While I really liked the versatility, it really wasn't my favorite project, but it was all right. It kind of like came and went. It was a good promotional tool, I suppose, to re-announce after they did their little sign the contract on stage thing. Okay. So it was a little promotional stunt where I don't know if it was authentic or a PR stunt. I would love to hear your opinion on it, people watching this. But after a big hiatus, Chris Calico had been like offered a deal uh, to renew his contract with Strange Music and keep things going with tech. And then he, he didn't want to sign it for a while. I mean, he got on stage, gave a speech and signed that shit. And then not long thereafter, okay. Tech 9 and Chris Calico drop out little EPs on the same day. 
Anyway, hmm. and at the same time, Ismail said, I want you to review Chris Calico's Kicking and Screaming. And I'm like, look at all of that syncing up like that. Right? Interesting. That's cool. But what's cool about um, it for this is this is like during the era when this dropped that I actually got into strange music. So I was a lot younger. <clears throat> I was still, I guess, actively seeking music at that point for inspiration. And I discovered Tech 9 And honestly, it was the song Dysfunctional with Chris Calico and I think his big scoob. Either way, they just thought that song really hit me and Chris Calico's third verse is really nice. The way he fucking sing raps and everything it was really great. And then if you listen to Tech Nine, you just can't avoid Chris Calico. He's just there. He's just like, like the side guy, not to be in a disrespectful way. He's like the number two as far like the tech nine hype man you know okay. like, like that's just how i saw him even if he wasn't number two as strange on sales or whatever i don't really know um i'm saying it more like you would he would just kind of be like you know like eminem and then i don't know proof or whoever was the hype man that's just kind of how i pictured the situation when i understood it hmm. and he would just be there in music videos and they like have this like these guys are homies like in the way that you like homies you know cool so I like, like that um i i just never got around to listening to albums because somehow over the years like 2010 to 2016 when i started reviewing albums i managed to clock a total of 25 albums <laughs> like that whole freaking time you know yeah so i just wasn't doing my due diligence back then and i feel like i would have it just like spoilers i would have really loved this had I encountered it when I was a lot younger and had I discovered more stuff like this, I would have been less of a hater in my musicking when I was a younger person. Anyway, so yeah, I'm kind of happy with this project in advance and I was kind of excited to check it out because it's right in the middle of like the heyday of when I discovered strange music. Anyway, how do you, how do you, what do you know about Chris Calico? Nothing. What do you know about strange music? Nothing. Do you know who Tech 9 is? No. I think you know who Tech I don't I mean I I I I think I've come across him before but I've never listened to one of his albums um I would like to we've you know I've mentioned it I think that um we will at some point All right uh, but yeah I just haven't yet so which Tech 9 album do you think we should we should cover people in in the comments coming to this because Tech Nine is pretty, pretty dope. For somebody that's never listened to it, where like, should we start? Especially in the era when this came out. I don't know. Maybe I'm just biased because it's during my inception. Like the Eba EP is one of I just like it a lot. It was it was one of my favorite things that came out around that time. Hmm. I digress. The cover of Kicking and Screaming. I love the title by the way. Just kicking. It just has that frustration. And I can think back to like when i discovered this this overall sound and my level of frustration in life mm -hmm. and sometimes it just feels like you kicking and screaming at the air just hoping it's all gonna work but like you can't get your message out etc i don't know it's just it's also it's vague in a way where you can relate to it but also understand exactly what he means so i think it's a cool title that really gets you up that like if you wanna if you wanna go break dishes or other such frustration relieving i don't actually do that but it looks really fun on the movies when, <laughs> when they the do greeks it. do it <clears throat> anyway so i like the title the cover's all right it looks like he's got like water like he's in the water mm -hmm. and it's fine <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean it kind of looks a little bit cartoony like there's something about it like a modern cartoony thing but it's him like mixed in maybe it's the way the water falls or like the way th that it works but it kind of looks like his shirt kind of looks cartoony like parts of it do um and then there's like these kind of weird symbols like i'm not really sure like what they're supposed to mean there's like three x's and then a plus um, and then like a spider or something. Like, I don't really know like how this all ties into everything, but I think it's cool. Um, his face is like kind of covered. You can really only like see like one eye and like his lips. Um, and that's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, I'm all right with, with that. I think we can get into the album. There's a bunch to talk about, of course. Mm -hmm. So why don't we start with the intro in parentheses skit. Okay, let's do it. Strange. Gosh, I mean, look, it is such effective branding. It is, it is everything you're supposed to do. I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, it's every album. I mean, at least they don't start their albums like that anymore. But every album it ends with that watermark. 
the exact same watermark hmm. and it's really good like i'm giving props here to strange music for the effective branding technique they did on the other hand it's just there it's like a beat maker tag but for the label and it's on every album you know and right. it's like when Maybach music for like fucking Rick <laughs> Ross or other fuck anyway it's fine it's good business practice and I'm not trying to be a shit on that cause otherwise I kinda really like the intro for what it does yeah it kinda reminds me of like a wrestling event I literally wrote that down I said intro is like a, at a wrestling show or something ladies and gentlemen are you ready like for the that most sort of like electrifying man in music? The genius in himself, mm-hmm. Big Chris Calico! Yep. And um, it's just hype. And then The Rock <laughs> was, I think, I think it was The Rock who's the most electrifying man in the world or wrestling or whatever. So, mm-hmm. and then what I like about it is I could see them starting sets like that like right as he's about to actually start his concert set when he comes on stage something like that playing and then he just comes rushing out for the first track and it just starts pumping up and i definitely think that this album is trying to give off the impression of being a more active and live experience and that's something i think it really delivers on it is hard i think to sit still and listen to this project like it's meant to that's fair i mean don't get me wrong you can totally play it on the bus or whatever but like there's a part of me that on many of these tracks feels like you're meant to vibe to it but it also does some weird weird shit with that Mm -hmm. just as a preface so i was excited with how this intro comes in but y'all know me if that intro really does nothing hard to give it a good grade yes it did that thing where it hypes you up but it was real short I give it a four. It's I. Yeah, I mean, it's 20 seconds long. Um, So, I mean, what's interesting is that, you know, when I first listened to it, having never listened to, like, anything by Strange Music before, I just thought they were going to say, like, this is going to be Strange Music, that this was going to be, and that was that. And then I was like, oh, it's the label. (laughs) (laughs) So it was like a secondary thought for me. But So I just thought it was just, like... Like him saying, like, this is going to be a strange music that we're going to listen to. Um, which is... It is f- which it is. Hold on. And sort of applies together. Can I we double down on the idea that it's effective branding? Because that's exactly why the label is that. Like, in a sense, they're trying very hard to not be mainstream boring music. Yeah. And at that's least, cool. At least in 2000 in this era. Okay. Anyway. Sure. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it, I thought it was a good intro. Um, I guess a 4.4 on 5. All right, so the next track starts us off with with stuff to talk about, and that makes me excited. Okay. Because the truth is, sometimes it just feels like I'm dancing with myself. You are. Da, 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 you da, are. Da. So this this introductory part was not on Genius, so I wrote down the intro part, but I got freaking lazy and I didn't write down the outro part that follows up. But it's like his parents talking to us and it's like the mom's like, now, Christopher, don't you go forcing everyone to listen to your crazy music. And young Chris is like, aww. And then the dad's like, she's right, son. Don't you go forcing everyone to listen to your crazy music. And, oh, it just triggered memories. I'm not even going to lie. Like, my dad did not want me to be a vocalist. He's probably never going to hear this podcast, so be cool. But, like, <laughs> he was so, so... Watch this be the one he fucking checks out. He was so <laughs> against me, like, singing because I sounded like trash. <laughs> I get it. Those who know me when I'm in my singing practicing moments will say that... It's not always the best. Maybe 10% of the time I can make it sound good. Yeah. But that's way up from the 0% when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. Practice. But, um... (laughs) And then you can just kind of hear young Chris being like, come on. And I'm just like, man, that's relatable. Being like a young person, feeling a lot of things. Your parents are like, nope, you can't share it with the world. And then now, now listen to your father. Ha, 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 ha. And then, oh, golly, geez, guys, I just want to sing. And I just loved it in that moment. I was like, we are in for a treat. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm not going to love every song. I like a lot of them most of them i think all of them i like 
But gosh, what an introduction. Like, I kind of I kind of would have been okay with the album just starting like that, you know? Yeah. And anyway, how do you feel about this one before I talk for a whole bunch? Um, well, I mean, I just, you know, it starts off with that uh, sort of like intro. So, you know, his parents trying to teach him that not everybody will like his crazy music um, and not to force everybody to listen to it. And so it's just sort of like... Like, he's basically told that what he likes is different from what everybody else likes right away as a child. So, like, that's sort of, like, a weird message to, to get. Like, you should just allow your kids to like different things. Um, so, yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, so he's still making music, even though, you know, people hate on him and whatever. Um, and he obviously has to, like, overcome obstacles like this. And, you know, people just being like, you can't force your music on other people. Like, I mean, which is fair. But, like allow you know allow them him to still make music and be weird um and he's sort of just saying like nobody really hears or like listens to his message in the music um and i think that that's sort of interesting like they more just kind of like gloss over it or they don't take him seriously um and it's pretty cool sounding and it kind of sounds a little bit uh horrorcore like mixed into it and i kind of like that sort of heavy feeling that it kind of gives um i like the the dancing with myself part which i feel like for me uh, i'm just gonna say it was it's robin's song uh that was played but i'm pretty sure it's the billy idol version but um either way i like robin's version better and <laughs> it's eerie and it's kind of like industrial and like just sort of has like a that really interesting sort of vibe to it. I think it's cool. Um, and then at the end, uh, he's not allowed to dance with himself and he gets uh, sent to bed with no supper. So, um, which is, again, a weird thing. Like, he's being punished for being himself and just dancing alone and, you know, being a goofball and whatever. And so he's kind of punished for being that weird sort of kid um and that's not necessarily the best thing to do but um it's weird and which is exactly kind of like what we were like warned about like kind of going going into this it's sort of not warned about but kind of you know introduced to it's going to be weird it's going to be uh crazy and whatever so it's interesting and it definitely feels um, very different, like you were saying, from mainstream rap, and so it does a great job. It is definitely strange music. I gave this um, a 4.3 on 5. So, what I really like is, I guess, the sincerity to this, but the difference between Chris Calico here and now, and I guess strange music in 2012, is they're coming like into fruition, mm. and now Tech Nine's been Forbes list year over year over year over year. And that, I believe, has changed a couple of things about, like, the tone and the hunger. Okay. There is a hunger in Chris Calico's verses and this entire album that I did not hear necessarily on the EP we just reviewed is kind of where I'm coming from. And I really hope the people watching this don't think I'm a hater for saying that. It's just something I've felt lately, like, with the newer Tech 9 music, like... Like, it just doesn't make sense with the amount of success they currently have. But when you jump back to here and they're just still trying to fight, like, you got you to gotta look at the landscape of music when guys like T-Pain were still cool, you know? And that auto-tune crap was yeah. just, like, everywhere. And look, what currently is happening with auto-tune I like, but the crap at the beginning of auto-tune was really bad, in my opinion. In my opinion. And so kind of looking at the landscape of party vapid nothing music owning everything this industry this entire everything is kind of favoring this and then you have little chris calico coming in like feeling like i want someone to tango with me the whole wide world don't know me so my label my whole label looking at me knowing i'm the genius and even just the way he sings that and whatnot yeah. just kind of showing it in like this vulnerability like I don't get it. Everyone knows I'm a shit. Everyone sees this talent, but it's like nobody nobody cares. And anybody that did lend an ear says I'm a genius. And here's the thing. Back then, you probably could not have gotten me to bother to listen to Chris Calico's album because he just was like Tech Nine's guy and I was one of those idiots that just didn't want to try very hard to care about music. <clears throat> but now that I'm listening to him, I kind of hear it. I get it. I mean genius i'm not a thousand percent sure what he means exactly but i think he's an extremely talented musician person and just the the, the, the way he sees music is is 
interesting in yeah. a way where it's like he takes the time to craft an experience and that's something i can really appreciate um just so i made it clear come boxing me unboxable top the untoppable impossible for more popular we may be more profitable b-e-a-t obstacles see me pay me gotta get the dough and i appreciate the fact that he understands the value of what he does this is the grind to make money um they're not popular but what they are going to do is make cash flow on that independent circuit and they've yeah. absolutely done that but by taking on the journey and the choices they've made they've kind of outcasted themselves so a lot of people don't get what they do a lot of people like don't the, understand it but like that's kind of like the whole thing is like they are for those outcasts but i think like looking at it in 2019 people are a lot more into this kind of weird shit so like this music would have dropped in 2019 a lot more acceptably in the mainstream than it did back then right okay. like because it's a there's a lot changed in the last seven ish years you know um so i think it's really cool plus i just i love the way he does the chorus if they don't understand my music and no one else's it's just this weird voice he uses mm -hmm. it's so goofy it's almost like for a half second you're going did he feature someone no he's just that talented he's just got that level of versatility yeah and then I'm dancing with myself, dancing with myself. And honestly, I can relate to that so much. Here's the thing. I decided to write a rap album about being a corporate office worker in his 30s. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to listen to that. It's something <laughs> I found out after writing that album. Like, it is not a pitch that entices any. Oh, so your album is going to make me think about work? I'm like, oh, <laughs> I guess that isn't the intended effect. But, like, it's cool because I'll just bump it myself and dance to myself. And nobody else wants to hear it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm a little hard to swallow because what they do, I do not follow. I'm dancing with myself, dancing with myself. Now, just as a person, I feel like so many decisions I've made are like that. Like, look at this podcast length. In a sense, we're just dancing with ourselves. Still, I have yet to find a channel that has copied us maybe because we're not killing it so nobody thinks it's a good idea <laughs> or nobody else just decided to go this deep with it and if you guys do know of a channel like that i would love to see it yeah but let us not, know they're not ranking so i don't see them or they're not ranking in a canadian montreal perspective of youtube anyway the second verse is still pretty good you know how you make it when you're fat black and you rap whack to the naked and i'm like fuck man he's right i mean i'm white but i'll admit i'm kind of fat <laughs> um, and I do rap a little whack to the naked ears and I'm like, shit, this is really relatable to me individually as a human that pursues the life goals that I pursue. Um, and I never even should have made it here. When you are a freak of nature, they hate you. Uh, I wasn't sure where to bring it up, but it's as good as time as any. He, Chris Calico suffers from, uh, vitiligo. I don't know how to say that. Vitiligo. That one, uh, <laughs> which is the skin condition -y thing and whatnot. And I guess his life has definitely has that extra burden and, and, and like challenge and he just well, overcomes it's, it it's all. It's very, it's very visual. So it's, um, it's you know the first thing a lot of people probably notice about him. Um, it stands out as you know something that's different about him right but, away. And but what he's also driving home the point is the vanity of the world, yeah. which is a real thing. Like Absolutely. I am currently on this active quest to lose weight mm -hmm. because I sincerely believe I'll have an easier time achieving some of my more like entertainment related goals if I can drop like 70 pounds yeah. and be a little more buff looking. And it sounds kind of ridiculous to say to like a lot of people, especially people that are into meritocracies and stuff, but mm -hmm. it's just bigger than that. It's something like the discipline to lose the weight shows that you're really that kind of guy and blah, blah, blah. High five to working out. It's awful. But <laughs> since I bought my elliptical <laughs> just over a month ago, I've used it every day, but two days and both yeah. those days yeah, were really good. related to this channel and that's why we didn't do it. But anyway, I'm trying. It's like the priority is health and shit. Yeah. I digress, but I get what he's, his feelings is coming from. Um, and he he probably like it, it probably is something that like label executives would have said yeah but look at his eyes bro and it's just sad but anyway uh these ranger labels will slave you but travenina saw a chance to stack the green up text hit and first then cali's bat and clean up 
And I like the fact that he shouts out attacking them for like, I think Travis is the business partner at Strange, and he like shouts them out and kind of puts it down that like Tech's gonna win and then Kylie's coming through and his time's gonna shine now, you know? So Tech's dropped the album and now it's his opportunity. Um, a, you are something else. A record deal that was summer young, sit on the shelf and was sipping something soapy next to sexual will cause my wealth. I really like the alliteration he does. It's something that's always attracted me to the general strange music flow is the quick alliteration. It is, I'm a sucker for it. <laughs> Plus, I like it how he's kind of relating that along with the wealth. He is absolutely going to have some soapy sexual escapades, which is definitely something that's going to come. Yep. Um, especially with uh, Tech Nine's tour bus. Is uh, you, do, you know, if you go back to those days, you're not supposed to tweet this. It, he has a whole song about if he catches you on your phone while you're uh, partying with him. Oh. Bad news fucking bears for you. Um, but it made me really get inspired to, if I ever end up in partying situations, to have fucking NDAs ready to go and nobody brings the fucking phone in and nobody's going to catch me on camera. You know what? It's not even for any reason that you think. What if I just felt like smoking a cigarette? Right? Okay. And I know it sounds like whatever, but to me, I don't want footage of me smoking a cigarette floating around the internet one day. Okay. Just because I don't want it out there. There is literally to this day only one picture of me ever in history holding a cigarette publicly in the internet. Just one. And I'd like to not make it two. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> I've been so good at it. And I can't say that if I end up in a partying situation, yeah. somebody doesn't hand me a rig, I might I might light one up, is all I'm saying. It's not a healthy thing to do. But, you know, sometimes, like, the right famous person wants to smoke a <laughs> cigarette. I, like, fuck that shit. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But that's that's kind of the, the, the way my paranoia would go. And then, I don't know, we'll see what happens in the night. Um, depends what Bonnie feels like. <laughs> Anyway, oh my god, oh my goodness, this business is so recoculous. I really like how he says that. Instead of dick, he says cock. Mm -hmm. And makes it kind of work with the oh my god rhyme. And now it's just fun because it's clever and it's fun. The whole industry watching us, we don't fit it in. If you listen close and dose it in because we're supposed to be the poster boys, the total time of me in this economy. I don't want to diffuse this for cooping. If you're snooping through the sound scan, think I'm flopping. Stupid, you sound man. But I marched to the beat of my own drum and I couldn't only make it so dumb. So I'm dancing by my lonesome. And I again, like, I like the fact that when faced, it's almost like faced against like conforming to the kind of bs music that the industry wants people to make mm -hmm. this like double and I'll, I'll give them credit while they even to this day i don't feel like strange music for any criticisms and annoyances i've made about these guys on this channel in case y'all have seen some of those i don't feel like they have ever tried to be like shit role models for the sake of cash flow and that is something that you can say fairly about the people that you know are di like different they seem to be honest with emotions to the degree of trying to be good role models ish with that like understanding that maybe it's not for the kids per se but you listen to this and it's a guy putting his heart and soul into rhymes to express his feelings of not fitting in but yep. simultaneously his desire to pursue to the end goal anyway because that's the right thing for him only to get grounded and sent to bed with no dinner um so i really really dig the track from a conceptual level i think the 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 music video is all right the, but i give it a 4.25 mostly because i don't know that i would want to go out of my way to listen to it often yeah. in the context of the album i really like it but there are some really good songs on this project like top like i would put that on my playlist songs which we'll get to real soon as an example and this by comparison is less good in terms of like just my feelings and subjective taste okay you ready to move on i am i'm ready to go to cali baby um this is one of the best songs i've heard in a while like i'm saying i heard a lot of really really good songs this song is phenomenal <laughs> like 
Holy shit, I was on a, I was just, was, were you expecting this one? Nope. Can we give Seven, the producer, I think he did all of them. Seven is one of my favorite producers because he's so all over the place with his skill and his ability to make these crazy diverse soundings. But like, we're just in a whole other ballpark and universe on this track right now and I freaking like it. But what do you think about this song? Um, yeah, I definitely really like this one a lot too. Um, the intro on this one is, is like super amazing. Um, and it's basically like a, a throwback to like the 50s or 60s. And it definitely reminds me of um, Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. So if anybody knows them or Frankie Valli, um, you know what I'm talking about, um, which is pretty epic. I mean, they're epic. Um, and it, it definitely reminded me of their song, particularly Sherry Baby, um, which is Sherry, Sherry Baby. So it's kind of like that. That was terrible. Um, I'm no singer. But, um, and it also kind of has like the Beach Boys like kind of vibe to it a little bit as well. Um, I think because of like the Cali. So I'm thinking like more like California, but it's obviously Cali Co. Um, so I think that that's kind of cool. And um, it's basically about how good he is. And really, this is like such a fun song. And I feel like this is like no other song I've ever heard doing the classic quest. I think that this is like super unique. Um, it's very cool. And um, I go listen to it. Um, so so um, it ends with um, I will not stop rapping over and over and over again. So we're going to keep getting, um, you know, rap from him. And I think that that's pretty cool that he's, you know, still enforcing that. So I gave this a, a 4.8 on 5. I get this a straight up five. This song yeah. is phenomenal to listen to because it achieves that thing where you can put it on and ignore Chris and just dance around your kitchen because yep. how the hell do you stand still listening to this? You might be on the bus, but now you're on the bus like this. <laughs> if you can't see me and you're on the audio format, so I'm wiggling. Um, <laughs> and it's just like, it's just so upbeat. And yep. if you look at it, like he just got grounded in the last track. And I think to a degree there's meant to be a, a succession to the flows with these deliberate little skits they put especially since <clears throat> there's some connections to the juggalos all up on this album mm. but uh in response to the idea of dancing with himself and everything and he's gonna do that dance to the beat of his own drum it's like and he gets grounded for it so fine he sits there in his room and he cooks up the weirdest awesomest shit ever like it it just has this old timey like almost live instrument feel to it and everything's so upbeat and then he just comes in with the fast rapping and this cool crazy just vibe to it like the whole world wasn't at a snake in the bat now we the best never taking it back one of the, the reason people know that we're breathing once we season we know that they never leave it and it's not like what he's saying is necessarily like next level substantial per se it's just this fun airy braggadocious whatnot but the way he wraps it over this beat is just sheer perfection it's it's so much more about the delivery the fun tone of his voice mm -hmm. the way he just kind of like just stands stands defiantly like they used to make fun of him now they want to be him anybody say they're better than cali don't believe him and then I question when he says shit like that. What if Tech Nine says he's better than you, dog? Ooh. Then what happens? But I'm not supposed to nitpick as much like that. Some people have, have told me I'm a little too much. That's fine. That's why y'all are here. Uh, they cold and they sneeze in and I be the reason. <laughs> That's funny, right? Because he's so like fire with it that they get cold and then it makes them sick because they catch a cold and he's the reason because yep. he's so fucking fire with his shit because he's so sick uh they took the long way but made my way not old and gray before i'm making a payday and i respect that i already have gray hairs coming in and i haven't really mm -hmm. made a payday so kudos my man got lots to say now that i'm still in my heyday and yeah that's fair that is some heyday era strange music <laughs> hip-hop will get washed away if i don't stay you had me until that line, but we'll give you a pass because this song is fantastic. <laughs> I'm not I'm not certain that that's true, though, Chris Calico. Um, and then some woman is like, if you ever heard of Tekka Nina, then you heard of him. Which I'm like, 
That's a weird brag after saying that nobody's better than you. Anyway, if you listen, you can hear him screaming because he murders them. And I like that, like, hip-hop shit. I, I really do. And then the chorus comes through and you're back to dancing and spinning your girl around the room and doing loop-de-loops and her dress is all flowy and stuff. And yeah, it's that kind of music. And then the next verse kicks in. Now, ladies, can I pick up one? Can I pick up one? Whichever I want, we'll have some fun. Yeah, me and you run. Always been the little lady's favorite. Call me Kelly Kelly. I'm like, damn, I could not care less about this verse. But it still sounds great over this ver- over this beat. And I'll be honest, I really think this song got Chris Calico laid in and of itself. Like, this is a panty dropper. <laughs> in like a weirder way. Like, you think R. Kelly, but this is going to get get a certain kind of girl wanting to get up and do some swing dancing and get herself all up and you know what i'm saying like i feel like i can see like girls in like bikinis doing like the twist to this or something like i see it more like that it's just fun and you know what fun does gets gets people excited to get on your dick okay i mean i'm in terms (laughs) of music serious does not have that effect the way fun does okay, as yeah. i've come to understand with life so i really appreciate it and then getting to that like outro where in this really fun situation almost in defiance to his parents which could be viewed as like a metaphor to the industry and the superiors he's just like i will not stop rapping i'll keep at it yep. grinds on this track is honestly amazing like it is a true gem for me finding in this channel in terms of memorability and stuff um i digress moving along we can discuss how they kill shit yeah this shit is what i like to call middle class white kid crack yeah because you can't it is just fast raps over hard hitting beats Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gosh there's a time where if it didn't sound like this i would have said it was trash (laughs) it was just like that yeah fast rap this it's nice yeah and then it starts off and you hear that voice tech tech voice and you just know this is going to be like one of those tracks Mm -hmm. how do you feel about finally hearing a Tech Nine Chris Calico team up song yeah. because you said you never and heard isn't one a before. Twisted, I think, is on this one too. Oh, I, I forgot about Twisted. Pretty sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got the whole crew. It's fun. Um, this one is definitely like you were saying, like harder, and it feels like more like modern. I guess like, like a different sort of rap than you know, you know, when we think of like classic rap. Like this is something totally different from like what I think of as classic rap. This is chop it. Yeah, and. Um, he kind of reminds me of like Killer Mike and like that kind of influence and then like 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 some of his songs he sounds different so like sometimes it's like Killer Mike and then sometimes I find him a little bit like Busta Rhymes or like Lil Wayne like I feel like he's kind of got like a lot of different um, influences that he kind of plays up on different songs Um, but this one definitely has some super sick rapping on it it's very fast it's very stuttered and it's like super cool like the way like the flow is um like like, just like that like that overall like beat and like the yeah 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 like that kind of stuff like it's just so creepy and weird and unique and i just love it uh this one is basically just like great rhymes sick fast beat and it's just a cool song so um oh and i loved it when um he like drops the beat and then like waits like waits like you know a few seconds and then like you think you're like is it over like what happened and then he like brings it back so i like that i think it's cool so yeah i really like this song i think it's great i think it's well done um i gave this a five on five (laughs) <laughs> maybe i'm a white middle class boy no, it's, it's, it's funny right because it's like uh, the first time you it's like your first time hearing one of these right yeah, like honestly yeah. that's amazing because like i've heard i've heard a few of these i mean i don't know if this will have like longevity but i think it's a really cool song I th- so in, in, a lot of us i feel like a lot of us <laughs> really like them and then at least I'm speaking for me and just anecdotally people I've spoken to. So if this doesn't apply Maybe to you. Maybe this is something you, you grow out of. It's the kind of thing where once you understand the tricks and you kind of start noticing everyone using the same filler syllable words, it's a little less impressive. Okay. And once you can learn the verse and spit it yourself, you're like, okay. And then it changes. That's all I'm saying. Um, no, I can't do these verses because I didn't memorize them. But... <laughs> 
I can go at that speed if I wanted to take the time to do so. There's a couple of videos of me doing a Tech 9 song and a Rap God, and you know, I'm just saying. Um, but once you understand the tricks to it, you're like, so like, you know, we claim we insane seen strange do the same thing. I can tell you, ain't that aim sound? Oh my gosh, there's so much that rhymes with it that you can compound in the syllables. So the idea is to pack as much shit as it in and then chop up the flow as you're doing it. Okay, makes sense. So like, it's really amazing to listen to. Like it's it's verbal gymnastics as far as it is. That's a cool but description. What I would argue is that very few can pull it off and not sound kind of copying strange music with it, in my opinion. Um, Because it's different than like what the Bone Thugs and stuff are doing. They were going at it in a more smoother kind of way. Kind of like how Twista is really smooth with it by contrast to what Chris Calico and Tech Nine are doing. Anyway, so... Chris Calgar just spits it off like uh, during the main vein on the mainstream they playing James tell them to wake it off tell them to knock it off tell them to pencil in to pick them off coming up the middle reason we done took so long give him just a little what they do 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 it, do it, whatever he skips to to my song I'll make you do a song stick it to your song fluids keep moving in the middle with pillows they're chewing on and basically they're doper they're fresher they're more amazing mostly because they have a distinction and when they come out the middle they also are talking about the Midwest so it's doubling down on where they're from, which I think is cool. Yeah. Um, other rappers ain't compatible. They'd be fallible if you want to challenge me, battle me, better saddle up. I whoop them out of love, seal it, but piddle it, paddle and tittle and tattle them and rattle them till they had enough. I really like it. It's just hitting me with syllables and alliterations and speed and energy. Yep. And he literally can P-E-E on MCs. And he rides the beat when he says that. that dar, dar, dar. And I really enjoy it. I really think it's fun. I like how um, he can they can skip it. Something I'm not particularly good at in terms of replicating these dudes is is skipping syllables. Like when you go ch- 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 choppers or whatever, or c- 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 continue to put them in a blender when I spit it on. You know, it's fun though. It's really really fun. Anyway, I like Cruz's verse. It gets me hyped up. I like the chorus. It's all right. You already know the outcome. How about turning up the volume and watch me kill shoot? Yep. And it's cool because. Like, when they are killing shit like this, again, there's this thirst and this hunger. Like, they're fighting against the mainstream and being overly ill. But, like, at this point, it's not, like, cheap shots or whatever. When you really think about the musical landscape back then, I feel like it just comes off kind of fresh. I I don't know. Again, there's that hunger to it. And then Twista comes in. And Twista's got, like, one flow, in my opinion. And he goes... (laughs) Twister, they call me Mr. Malevolent with a status so that I'm another pistol that said they can kind of cook to cut the throat and no control to me nicking in every syllable that's stronger than the fill up an elephant. I, I can sense that you were soft as a moccasin. I can send people that you would. Anyway, I'm not like giving it full justice, but that hug it, hug it, it's just every song. It's just that's Twister's flow. And I like it. One of the earliest songs that blew my mind is Let's Go by Trick Daddy versus Twista. Mm-hmm. And so I memorized that shit as a teenager. And I really like fast rap. And I'm not even hating. And honestly, I think Twister just does that constant solid one flow where he kind of adjusts his speed a little bit and then kind of just blows it. It's nice, man. It's really enjoyable to listen to. Like, I'm general militia and you be feeling every person through everybody can spit it, but, but still very packed so much artillery or red like a military. There ain't no telling how many bodies we're about to kill and bury. I'm like, I gotta give him credit in the fact that, like, no matter what's going on in his verse, man, he's able to, to like, re-rhyme it all, like, artillery yeah. military kill and bury like that's cool that's multi-syllabic shit like give me the block then i'm a ball that, because i'm tipping spending money when i'm in the mall i try to be different different kind of clothes other kind of shoes when the whole city swag they be asking if they can come and kick it and that's cool because shoes so hoes are gonna come and kick it and so he's actually making well, a little bit works. a little consistent with it overall they're dope they do what they gotta do he's killing it twister and I'm like, all right. And then Tech Nine comes in, and I, I really like how he starts it. Hey, yeah, 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 Yates. And I'm like, oh, Aaron, Aaron Yates, you clever little bastard, you. <laughs> um, you don't know how you don't know how to handle. Uh, you don't know the handle. Then you know you a day late. Death and destruction is they fake. Cause when I get up on a track, it'll be like, wait, sick of my. And then he goes like, fucking quick. It takes time to memorize a tech flow is what I'm trying to say. But sick of the lip and get a flip and you be the victim and I'm going to pick him off, fix him with a, with a quick and I'm knock the vision off of people. No giving, living or igging on the rigorous. Look at this. Will somebody look at this? I'll be killing it. And you can just see how well it's just 
optimized to go fast and just rip the speed up down to the breathing points down to the everything and it's actually kind of hype you know like he's actually not just saying a bunch of vapid shit it's like yo we are coming into this industry we are about to come and take over um put up shut up get up be cut up it's animosity foot up in your gut up bullet for colors i'm an atrocity wicked i wretch around and wrench it up uh, off and rip it i'd rather be red and ready than re with running with rigids than running with rigids i don't know you get the sense that the realness of what he brings to the table and the authenticity is more important than say the wicked crap that other people do for the sake of it yep. and he fights against that don't be stupid if you got a minute better run away you better jump or slump in mucus never gonna put the gun away you better pack up off me or get it admit it i'm killing off everybody then it's acquitted and we knock in and he never stopping never can be the cleverness she jocking me cocking coming to get the head of the chula so he's gonna come in kill off all the competition pretty much slay it and as far as the independent circuitry goes tech nine dominated and owns it so he kind of did do that and uh, we knock in he never stopped people can't beat his cleverness fair enough girls do want to fuck him fair enough and then you get it come in to get the head in the of the chula so get the head of the because you mm -hmm, get it the mm -hmm, blow job mm -hmm. but it's also like the king guy of the top of the organization okay uh, anyway so it's fine it's really enjoyable the rest of the verse is fine i i really really do like it i give this track a 4.5 on 5 i will never really think twista sounds as good next to those two i think seven is actually the fucking star um That's i heard cool. the beat and i realized it was seven and then i went and checked and realized he was doing all sorts of production on this project but as much as i think chris calico is dope and he is and tech nine is dope here like i'm floored with the yeah because you know what it is about tech here it's the crazy like he changes the rhythm up so frequently in this verse where even if what he's saying sometimes is kind of silly just to make it work at least what he's doing it like it'll take you hours sometimes just to to nail it not as good as him yeah well and, i mean he's that's why he's great and that to me is really cool whereas some of the newer stuff just doesn't have that freshness to it in in my humble little opinion which somebody today told me has been completely annulled and i've lost all cool points on the internet <laughs> that's fine dish hits fire 4.5 from my valueless opinion all right well mayday mayday this channel is going down <laughs> Well, now you've been introduced to Ritz, who is another fine member of the Strange Music. Honestly, I don't think Ritz fans like me on this channel. Every time he comes up, I bring up cocaine and strippers because in every song that he ends up coming up on or every album, it just so happens that cocaine and or strippers get mentioned. So his well, fans don't like me very much, but... Because you keep pointing it out? Yeah, I can't help it. <laughs> um, and then Chameleonaire, who... Can we just stop and just talk about how every time I hear this guy rap, he's fire? He's so fucking talented. He's so good. Rapping Dirty is such a classically fucking amazing track. When, when you listen to it, you're like, wow, that's like an anti police anthem. Like, it's really intelligent and shit. Plus, he's a quick spitter. Plus, he invested in technology and is an owner of cool. Makeway Studios who produces okay. a whole bunch of fucking YouTube content that I regularly consume, like rap critic and Todd in the Shadows and shit mm. at some point. So Todd's like doing a video on him. He's like, oh, I guess in a sense, he's my boss. So Chamillionaire is quite the cha-ching millionaire. Get it? Yeah, I got it. All right, baby. How do you feel about this song? <laughs> well, this is basically uh, his like distress call. He's calling out. He's going down. Um, and this one, again, has like a super nice beat and some super um, like sick rhymes again. So I like it. I'll give um, a few of them here. Um, Chris, the bee's knees. Love that. Um, <laughs> so I guess the I guess the best in me, it gets deeper than your depth perception. MCs believe in me. So there's no and there's no question. This is my SOS to you and also F you to you. F you too, and I won't step to you again. So I definitely love the bee's knees thing. I think that's super cute when you throw in like something like a grandma would say. Um, and I think it's interesting, like just like the play on words and like his flow, like you can just like, even just me reading it at point blank, um, it's, 
like you can get a sense of like the flow and like the rhymes and like the rhyme schemes and I think it's really cool um, and he continues on and I'm a hold my breath for you to stop these checks coming to to these train wrecks of my men to say uh, try to save it to stay uh, connected resurrected so again just like more like I can't even get like the rhymes out um, <laughs> and um, so like even just like reading it it's like really cool it's fast um, I think it's like interesting the way that he's kind of like flowing through it um, and I really like how like the music gets like trippy like the message is not like going through like there's like kind of like that like staggered like you know when you're like trying to like speak and like you're not really sure like if the other person like understood what you said on like the walkie talkie or whatever um, so I think that that's kind of cool um, and this is basically about them killing it in the music business and how they're making money and how they can afford these fancy things now and it's just like another like sick song that's like super fun and has like a high beat so um, I, I gave this a 4.8 on 5 I thought it was um, cool I thought it was again super unique um, but again, I haven't ever listened to any of this stuff before, so maybe it sounds like all the other stuff, but for me, it's a good first experience. So, this might be the part where some people call me a hater or whatever, but if there was <laughs> ever going to be the indie rapper checklist, like, you know, like those hipster memes where how to be a hipster, or right. how to be a basic white girl, yeah. or how to be... Get like a fedora, to, blah, 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 all those things or whatever. So, if you want to be an indie rapper... Of a lyrical capacity especially on the trickster side of things okay and it's always the trickster side of things because i don't know if i would go ahead and call this lyrical music because we've covered what i would call now lyrical where it's just puns for days and it's triple entendres or stories i'd call this the flow version of what most people mean with lyrical this shit from a flow perspective the way they deliver it is just like ridiculous but i mean this music thing here is in a state of emergency all about currency whackness reoccurring with urgency can't take it no more uh maybe i'm getting too old mouthpiece just too cold like that's not the craziest lyrics but the delivery is crazy yeah the message music is kind of fucked up in pop land all about currency whackness reoccurring with urgency so i suppose what has happened to me is i studied music history and realized pop music was just always that and i guess in the last decade and it really was starting to happen i'd say late to the mid the the 2000s decade the middle to end of that it really started to happen so by 2012 hip-hop is pop music and it is and now people admit that hip-hop is pop music so all that's changed so he's kind of right but the problem that i have with a lot of these indie guys is like there was just always a bunch of other underground shit that was actually dope that was getting no love or shine or shit and people who make songs like this kind of act like the music industry is fucked for reasons that are somehow new or different like jay-z wasn't rapping about getting rich in 96 yeah that's true like i'm a little confused the entire golden era is guys rapping about getting rich <laughs> like what i mean yes there's some conscious and political stuff but yeah. the idea not all of them but quite a lot of them are doing that so i don't understand the criticism because it's not really a new th it's not like all of a sudden there's this state of emergence and this is a general grievance i have with a lot of little indie little indie rappers but with indie rappers you just take shots at the mainstream in a, in a boring way and i feel like strange music is a huge part of why this is such a widespread practice but like for real you come across any little end indie rapper that raps super quick that does the trickety trick stuff considered to be this kind of thing and they're gonna have a song like this absolutely yeah. I need to occupy hip hop like it's my concubine, but I'm a person, so that mean I gotta be a bigger one. Tell uh, Ritz to pull the trigger, all them people's done. If I miss, then all the hits you can name under the sun. It's a trick how they doing this music is done. Tell man, don't mic me up. Tell the weed people, light me up. Your CD don't hype me up. YouTube fans, like me up. Like, I get the point of this. 
It's basically implying that in spite of the lack of mainstream success and attention, my music of higher substances of quality has attracted a legitimate core fan base. It's literally the behind that suit strategy of what we're trying to do here. So I can highly empathize with what they're trying to do, create a raw and authentic product, put it out there and rely on the fact that you're not doing something mainstream and hopefully the mm. fans and shit are gonna support what you do. It's just, when you get to stuff like MCs believe in me and there's no question, this is my SOS to you and also F you too and I won't step to you again and I'm gonna hold my breath for you to stop these checks coming to these, and I'm like, why do they always got to be mad at, like, other people for making money? <laughs> That's the part that, like, always drove me nuts with this shit. And when I was younger, I was super into it, and I was super inflammatory, and it made me a real fucking hater to a lot of mainstream artists that, when we've come and looked at their music objectively, I'm sitting here going... Oh, I was such a hater. Why? Because a bunch of these songs told me to fucking hate mainstream music for That's no good fucking reason. Like, here's the thing. Say what you want about this. I can put this on and then go put on Kanye West right after and have equal enjoyment from both of them for different reasons, for different vibes and shit. And you know what? Is one better than the other? Totally up for conversation per se. But I can tell you that Kanye West on the Jesus album has a much better attitude than Chris Calico on the fuck you mainstream pay me attitude because what's the so. difference like really these are just guys trying to make the same fucking money they're mad other people are making mm -hmm. now i've spent a lot of time thinking about this issue many album reviews discussing this topic and maybe it's not fair to put this on chris calico here in 2012 but rhyme sayers and a bunch of other legit shit was out there and they're not big upping them. They're not saying, check out these other dope guys. All of the rapper songs like this. And I mean, like, all of them are, I'm better than the mainstream. <laughs> my, yeah. So Ritz, in my opinion, has taken it some of the hardest across the time that I've given these lectures. And it's because he talks about cocaine a lot. And a lot, not maybe not on this song. I don't even remember if he mentions it on this song. And I'm like, how you judge the motherfuckers for sipping lean and then going on about doing blow? mother anyway yeah it just it's just a whack thing to me when i would judge both equally anyway rich is versus hype though because don't get me wrong these guys have hype fucking flows but like i guess when i hear this kind of contact and i understand it like the mainstream doesn't want them like that's just kind of the reality of authenticity and I understand the frustration of it. And people probably wrote a bunch of blogs and shit making fun of them and crap. That's cool. But it's really funny that they're like, they love me on the internet, but they don't want to see me on a magazine cover. Well, here's the thing, Ritz. The internet's popping today. You have a crazy fan base that really made fun of me on the internet. And respect to Ritz's fan base. That's some loyal shit. Um, but like who cares if you're not in a magazine cover i guess it's the transitionary of times and i'm saying this with 2019 hindsight but like mm. ritznet didn't make magazine music to me he made under he made music that and i'm not gonna lie my white rapper turned uh turned down like bitch, turn up bitch turn down i don't know i fucking love it like he has some crazy flows and some good gems that like i would have as a younger cat totally handed my money over far faster than the mainstream so now i finally made it everybody want to see him stuck up me suck up to the industry suckers please fuck him i can barely afford to eat supper now you're telling me the work that i put in and all the years that we hustled making music now somebody want to eat a piece of it fuck you and your snapback and your whack rap you suck you suck he sucks too they rap he's whack she raps free I'm like whoa the flow of it all is really awesome the petulant jealousy they sound like haters okay yeah i have That's been true. accused multiple times of being a hater but to me a hater is someone jealous of somebody else's success so they make fun of them like these aren't intelligent criticisms these aren't like really good rhymes it's just this emotional you suck you suck he sucks he's whack he's rap you're an mc what snoop they shoot me you should go to college you i don't know i'm gonna get made fun of here comes a <laughs> dislike all that bullshit but like you could be anything that you want want to be but not a rap artist your lyrics ain't cutting it you suck as a performer sorry to inform you i'm like right dog like I'm not saying that Ritz isn't an extremely talented MC, that he's not an extremely talented performer and shit, but like you sound like a fucking dick. 
and he doesn't sound cool to me. Every time I log on to World Star, I see a bunch of shit. Well, no, it's fucking World Star. <laughs> like, come it's on. It's what you get. Come on. Like, the world is full of trolls, and honestly, if you were a good businessman, you'd be happy with this kind of hate because it's what made Tech 9 Forbes famous. That's all I'm saying. Anyway. True. Then Chamillionaire kills it. His verse is just fucking stellar. I have zero complaints. Chamillionaire is fucking fire. And, like, he puts himself out like a fucking boss. That's all I'm trying to say. You know, because he doesn't whine. You know, here we go now. Horror flick. You should start the sequel, people. What I saw to deceive you. I'm a doctor that walks in and greets you. I didn't serve you with a smile like I'm offered to people. Meanwhile, I'm the wrong one to speak to. That's just interesting. It's like you can approach me and I'll act like I'm the whatever, but I'm kind of here just deceiving you off the jump. That's just such a more interesting tone to take on a subject than anything of the whiny variety. To hell with a bark on my dogs, let it lead you to bars that are illegal and honest is lethal. Oof, he just murked me. He just proved he's <laughs> fucking better than the mainstream with dopeness. He's not complaining. Um, Batter flow that'll mess up your... I let it rewind. Batter flow that'll mess... And keep in mind, it's going way fast and tricky. They got a calico, got a tech and a nine. I'm like, ah, I get it. Because he's bringing up shit, making yep. bars. Oh, it's way better than you suck, you suck, you suck. Like, I'm sorry, guys. But like to me, from a bars perspective... What I've come to see is you've got to put some effort in. It's got to either be like really interesting use of compounding language, like you're using words that aren't common or interesting. If what you're writing is something that other people can easily write, it isn't actually that dope. And unfortunately, that's, I guess, the difference. And more weapons than everybody on this record combined. And that's hilarious because he's saying he's so like ridiculous that he's actually got all these guns and shit. Unlike, you know, whatever. So I just think it's great. And that's strange. And that's fucking amazing because it's weird to him that it's that they don't have more guns. But just the way he did it and he dropped the strange thing. It, that, yep. was, it was, that was so well written. That is some of the finest bars on this track is what I'm trying to say. Um... And he goes, I know it's been a while since I sold a plot in two and a million and a million and a half of you. You tell me I'm a rapper, you was rapping too. I have you looking like a mummy and they're rapping you. I guess the difference is Chamillionaire had a fucking hit and a half there, right? Like, he knocked it out the park and, like, has had a really prolific fucking underground rap career. <laughs> he really backs up the claims in a way where I do not believe Chris Calico or Ritz do. And that, I think, really matters. Like, who doesn't know Riding Dirty? I can't think of one Chris Calico song that has that kind of reach. And I definitely can't. That's fair. I can think of some writ songs that have that reach in certain circles. But, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe y'all can be like, fuck you, Holden, there's this Chris Calico song. But Riding Dirty was so big, my mom knows it, okay? <laughs> it was regular, regular ass mainstream radio. Weird Al Yankovic made a song called White Nerdy to it, okay? That's how you know <laughs> That's your how shits. you know you made it. Weird Al touched his shit. Chameleon is fire. I, I want to do a Chameleon album because I'm so impressed by how well he rhymes, you know? Uh, and then and they know they know look at my garage they tell me it's a zoo is that a jaguar that's so fucking clever because of all the animal car names uh, of course it is i purchased it because the corpse will fit <laughs> and then he makes it fucking hard again like yeah if i'm gonna murder somebody the yeah. jaguar is useful and this trunk is bigger than my porsche is and he says it correctly which i thought was cool they say it changed. Well, I call it metamorphosis. And I'm like, did he just say metamorphosis up in this shit? <laughs> Fucking billionaire! You just proved you're better than the mainstream. <laughs> you didn't complain about nothing. You just flossed and killed it. Yep. He's... What? Anyway, that was... His verse was fire. It was really dope. I hope I didn't piss off too many of you at this. I'm pretty self-aware of the reactions at this point. 4.35 on 5. It's a really great song. It's just... I don't like it when underground rappers sound like fucking haters, but don't sound dope. Like, if you're going to... Yeah. Like you got to sound you. dope if you're going to come in and say you're better than, like... You better be fucking dope. Like, isn't it... Like, there's a lot of people, like, Wu-Tang dropping albums around that time that you're up against. Were they the dopest Wu-Tangs? I don't know. I haven't listened to them. But there's a... I literally was just looking... At the list of albums that came up between 2010 and 2014. Okay, so I saw a lot of great artists dropping in that era of the underground. So uh, the haters seems like instead 
like a smarter strategy the underground could employ is and if you don't think i'm good enough check out this guy from that city and that guy from this city and look at all the great shit everywhere that the mainstream's ignoring not fuck everybody else listen to me i'm not gonna be able to get behind that messaging anymore that's fine um i think i talked a lot again yeah i okay. hope it's not dumb for you <laughs> If there was a name that I would say <laughs> is absolutely synonymous with the mainstream garbage <laughs> that diluted hip hop. What name would it be? One of them absolutely is T-Pain. Mm -hmm. Who, can we give all the credit for? He learned how to sing and he sounds like a fucking angel today. Okay? Oh, yeah? Yeah, he sounds amazing. Hmm. Such clean vocals. He said he felt bad for fake, and I'm not lying. He said he felt bad for faking it and felt he should learn how to do it. And I'm so grateful for it. Can be done, folks. But Mr. Blame it on the ah, 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 <laughs> alcohol, blame, like him on the next song. Yep. It, fe it feels so right, though. It does, but a little bit of a hypocrite kind of moment. I'm just throwing mm -hmm. it out there. You don't. That's that's kind of been one of my problems with these you're guys. You're trying to be underground, but you're using mainstream no, no, no. people. You're hating on the underground. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you're hating from the underground on mainstream garbage. Where let's be real, T Pain on a social political front has contributed much of the exact mainstream garbage, lack of substance lyrics that you fucking can't stand. Absolutely contributed with many anybody's that w were in the rims you know like and then you pay him to be on your album for what to get single buzz to create an ironic version i'm confused how this actually makes sense it's like okay fine maybe i'm missing the greater point maybe y'all don't agree with me but around this time he's literally making an album with Lil wayne and shit like like t-pain is i'm not hating on t-pain i'm saying the feature of T-Pain right after the yeah. fuck the mainstream to go with such a mainstream artist. Wow. Right? Yep. Anyway, uh, what do you think about this one? Um, well, it's obviously featuring T-Pain, which is great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the drumming at the beginning. I just like to wanted to mention that because it sounds kind of like um, like a Native American, like drum circle something or another kind of beat so i like that and i think it's supposed to be like native people also singing um like the words dumb for you over and over but like you can't quite get that like you would have to listen like hard to like kind of understand that that's what they're trying to say mm. um and i'm guessing like they're representing like where they're from so i think that that's kind of interesting like you know the midwest maybe they were you know they were near like a reserve or something like that or, like you know where they grew up um so i thought that that was kind of interesting if it's you know if that's the facts um and i think like really like it's it's short it's one of the shorter uh songs on the album it's two minutes 31 seconds um and it's sort of just like the way that it is created it sort of is made to like kind of put you in like a trance because like it certainly did for me it was working um and just like that sort of like that you just kind of like get sucked into like the sound. So I think the production, I think seven or whatever is great on this one. Um, it's very cool. Again, um, I kind of liked, I appreciated hearing T-Pain. I thought that that was a little bit uh, like quirky uh, fun and it worked well. I think he was fine. Uh, I gave this a 4.75. I like this song. <laughs> I just wanted to point out that I had no idea where T-Pain was from until just now when I Googled it because he may always oh, be yeah. saying where he's from, but I didn't know because Florida is it Florida? Is it, it is. Flo Did you know? Did... What <laughs> is that? Florida, Florida. Holy shit! I never. Holy I never shit. made that connection. Really? Yeah. So T Pain is from Tallahassee. Okay. I didn't know that until just now. Maybe there was some like fl pro Florida song. Florida, Florida. Holy crap. <laughs> I didn't realize that until wow. this very second. You are behind on the times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there you go. That's a moment for the internet. Um, but yeah, uh, Chris Calico sounds all right. Okay, did I do it? Did I put the key in the door and lock the thing down? Did I hit it? Yes, I did. Only problem is you got a boyfriend and he way too hot now. I'm like, okay. Fucking uh, a lady and then finding out he has a girlfriend. 
or uh, sorry, a significant other after the fact. That's a good twist. Um, she ain't said nothing about marriage, so don't get carried away and get buried. It can get real dumb and ignorant. Killer cities where I'm from, idiot. People might die over some infidelity shit. Fair enough. Actually, yeah, I'm surprised at the lack of rap songs about motherfuckers murdering each other because somebody fucked somebody's girl in a legitimate way. I hear you. That actually sounds more Romeo and Juliet y and could, you know, like it has a well, vibe to it. I mean, it's kind of like what Eminem almost killed. I meant shot like someone for a little bit less him and just anyone else. Just, I'm just uh, mentioning it. See, here's the deal. She got a baby by some young punk runner run up on me. He's feeling too ill. Never checked the player, checked the game. He never came up home. I don't know why she did you like that. I borrowed your girl. I gave her right back. And that's fair. He's like, uh, why are you mad at me? I don't know why she chose to cheat on you. It's not really my issue. But yeah, fuck her. I have a sidebar. She don't know how to act. You better get her. She got goal winner like it was born in her. I'm like, okay, the big old booty keep me warm in the cold winter. I'm like, that's not how big booties work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I suppose. But anyway, it's fine. It's just kind of like, whatever, I fucked your girl, ruined your relationship. I'm sorry, but not really. I'm going to fuck her again. And then T-Pain comes in with that classic mainstream rap sound, <laughs> auto-tuned and everything. Aw, uh, yeah. And I'm about to cast you, but I'm always representing where I'm from. from, from oh, wow. From, from. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, boy. And I had to stop and act. I'm like, is that T-Pain? Like, T-Pain, T-Pain? And it really was. Um, and then Chris Calico has another verse. Mr. Goody Good could change it to make it hood. I love to keep the peace, but I wish a person would. That was really, cl like, really clever, right? Because the peace in that case means both things, so he has to keep a gun on him. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, he likes to keep I the peace. I hear that. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was just clever the way he did it. Let go. It would be different if she sell out. Do you know what you headed for? If I cock it, then let it go. She gonna see, see she lonely and chose me. You bored at home alone and trying to blame it on me. And it's like, fine. So, the relationship comes in. It's not really my fault. I am void of all this. At the end of the day, divorce her before it goes dumb. And I'm just like, Chris, you could also just not fuck her. That's an option. Mm -hmm. But just that's saying. okay. That's okay. You could not. Another common main. What's the fun in that? Right? See, there's a common main mainstream hip hop trope of fucking another man's girl and whatever, and how that makes you more of a man for doing so. Did I just go there and bring up? Anyway, mm -hmm. I think y'all got my point on that. Be that as it may, I give it a four point uh, three five because as far as mainstream rap goes, it's pretty fun for a generic sounding song about fucking other people's girls. Yeah. I'm sorry, it, it, the irony is just, it, it drives me butt nuts a little bit. But like, I really did think it sounded really good. When I was hitting my elliptical and listening to T-Pain, I was like, yeah, this all makes sense. When I thought about it, I got kind of annoyed at that shit. But otherwise, totally fine. Um, I guess we could move on to the next one where I did give a higher grade and my feelings are way much better. And you know what? They said maybe we shouldn't dance to this or freak out too much, but instead we're gonna spaz. Spaz. I like it when they do the dubstepy shit. Okay, I just want to say that hearing this cool ass dubstepy crazy fucking beat thing, it's awesome. And unless I'm mistaken, this is the video where Tech Nine wears goggles and they just jog. They go running and jogging. And I'm like, what a smart video because you look like you're being healthy and shit and it really is a smart and cheap video to make all things considered. Like it was not a high budget video. <laughs> you do get to see a lot of them running and jogging and shit. So Fair it's yeah. very forgettable video and it served as, a, to me it would be visuals. That's a good word of visuals. Okay. Um, it's just so upbeat and it's intense and like, you know, it has that ironic intro while listening to this song. Take it easy. Don't dance or make noise at all. Please don't mosh or scream or refrain from any erratic behavior. Never mind. Go crazy, spaz. And then you just picture the mosh pit as people start bouncing. This is totally a song for the live show. Mm -hmm. And then just the way it's like spawn off in the 70s, 80s, baby. I'm a busted to death of me. Gone. Sanity left of me. Middle fingers up to haters who slept on me. Stop. I like the flow i like the way this one comes in and just fucking hits you with that i mean i can't say it's like reinventing the wheel i'm saying it's doubling down on a tried and true fucking dopeness and killing it fresh in a way that i find super appealing and just the way he hits it overall 
Yep. And it, it's like, I'm okay with middle fingers up to the haters who slept on him. Because when Chris Calico is, in a sense, complaining about how people think he's strange and different and not conforming, so fuck them, I'm all about that message. It's when you turn your guns and fire at the mainstream out of haterness that I don't like it. Um, so this one is awesome for what it is. He just stands firm, you know, and I ain't aiming for the middle, trying to eat and get the vittles. I ain't talking about a little, and I ain't ashamed to be mental giant's protege. That, that, that's, that's, uh, tech nine, the mental giant. That means people getting blown away, nicknamed Cali baby, winning all my medals, they're going crazy, whatever. Then it just, just feels proper. Second verse, it has a similar kind of flow. The beach just got that heavy bass. It just sounds really fucking dope. Um, I don't know if it's really saying anything super crazy. It's just kind of it's proud of who they are. They're just on the grind. It's like a strange music. Like we're from the Midwest. We rap really good. We're gonna kill it. We're gonna take over it. And that just to me sounds super fucking like anthemic. It sounds like something to mosh to, something to get behind. Mm -hmm. And then Tech Nine comes through and and really follows through and does his own version of it. You know, incredible to be back in medical procedures with Calico slicing yet. Damn his hard ass motherfucker remember when people used to say ham all the time dwam dwam <laughs> is a tech nine song and it's a really fucking great tech nine song all right i'll have to check it out uh, i don't i don't remember any of the words to it but i can hear it in my head playing but but just the murderers you hear in this jam you'll never be one i'll get it when i've ever been i go sicko and crack it on top it'll be bam because <laughs> of course you're gonna get tricky i can be real honorary my persona be gotta be honor be, oh, i like it it just this feels like nostalgia in the best possible way for me this is young 20s i'm fucking vibing out jumping around a room if i was in better shape because i didn't have good shape back then i was a round ass <laughs> motherfucker back then anyway <laughs> Sounds fire. It's another 4.5. Great vibe, great beat, totally dope, awesome track. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't have, I'm not gonna, yeah, I don't really have too, too much to say about this one, but it's definitely, like, a song that you can go crazy to. It has, like, uh, a super hype beat and, like, hype energy, so it's, like, super fun in, like, that sense. Um, and we get more Tech 9 on this one, so I like that. Um, and this song reminded me, like, I, I mean, I don't really watch a lot of them, but it reminded me of something that I would hear in, like, a dark superhero movie or, like, something like that. And, and it felt a little bit more, like, Marilyn manson e, like, inspired. Like, it kind of had, like, that darkness to it. And, like, we are kind of coming up to, like, a, a heavier part in the album um, as well. So I think that that's sort of, like, tying into, like, where we're at. Um and so it's interesting. It's not necessarily something that I would go to, but I like how it, uh, it, it kind of leaves me, like, feeling like this dark space around. Um, so I give this a 4.35 on 5. All right. Uh, the next track is called Dixie Cup. All right. Um, I forgot to bring this up, but I feel like it's appropriate as a hip-hop reviewing channel that we should say to rest in peace to Juice World thing. And I probably should have started off the episode with that. So for the people who got this far, um, today, as in December 8th, as we're recording this, he died of a seizure in a hotel. And I guess it got triggered at Dixie Cup because um, he, he, like, he was a consumer of certain products that may be seizure-inducing. And I don't want to make assumptions before there's news out and stuff, but... At, he just turned 21 on Monday of like the just passed and I just thought it was super sad as we go into a song about getting fucked up yep. um, but I think it's just worth remembering that when you write songs about being fucked up in general uh, he, he was very inspired by Future and Future kind of tripped out when he realized that he got this young kid to start sipping lean because I don't think he really realized that creating his music and telling his story and stuff may have consequences by the same virtue hmm. I don't know if I would have popped Molly if Tech Nine and his boys were uh, so into it because it was around that era that I may have uh, sipped my first water bottle with a dissolved powder in it <laughs> hmm. And, uh, yeah, just throwing it out there that sometimes these songs, expressive as they may be, may have some consequences. And maybe we should all, as people with influences and platforms, just just consider that shit more. And I'm not saying people don't have the right to express whatever they want and to say whatever they want, because I certainly will say whatever the fuck I, I choose. Like, I just told you I do dr did drugs once upon a time, you know? Right. Like, but... You know, like, 
I'm filling up my Dixie cup, throwing up and I'm liquored up, stumbling and I'm spilling stuff like hell yeah. I mean, there is a glorification to alcoholism and other such things that as time goes on, I find it harder to, to enjoy listening to because maybe I'm past that part of my life and I don't turn up like that no more. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm pretty much done with alcohol. I'm a, I get Virgin Shirley Temples at events now and I brag about how I'd have no alcohol in my cup. Mm-hmm. Am I sober? Well, I'm not saying that. Um, there's some legal products in Canada at this point. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't like glorifying it. I don't think it's cool yeah. personally. On the other hand, I fucking love this song. <laughs> like, I really fucking love this song. That's rare. And I feel like it's so sad that I started this with a Juice World thing and got into that moroseness because it has me looking away at the content, but this song features fucking Twisted and Big Scoop, but Twisted. I really like Twisted. I think that Mr. Monoxide and Jamie Mad- Madrox have some of the coolest voices and their adherence to new metal according across their catalog has been awesome and they do some great emotional rapping and i don't think bonnie's listened to twisted before so my mm-hmm. question is what twisted album should we do fam let us know in the comments and we'll definitely do some twisted at some point um that was just something i wanted to know uh either way chris calico's verse is fine he's just partying he's fucked up you know put your cups up and i'm drinking trying to get fucked up they buying it for me i lucked up and looking for scoob to show in cleavage so free drinks they can get to receiving but i ain't buying because you ain't leaving with me what i'm gonna do and i think that's interesting because while yes it's all partying he's also showing that it's a little twisted right he gets all fucked up the girls are willing to get all naked for free shit but then aren't necessarily gonna fuck him so he's not actually gonna indulge in it mm. i'm off in the dark now i'm on the clear i don't drink any beer i try to cut him off but to keep handing him here and now i get too drunk to steer get drunk like I'm, we're supposed to and a lot of the language i think chris calico puts forward does kind of make it feel like this like getting trashed is just part of the job like it's his expectation like it's not even something he wants to be doing it's just he's got to be doing it because it's what happens but when i get closer she tells me she goes to shows and lift her clothes up salute drink till my face is black and blue tipping the waitress so she gonna keep on going by you i'm off that kct caribou uh caribou lou is a drink tech nine and a squad drink okay uh, i think it's 151 and pineapple rum and anyway it, it's the hook of this song <laughs> i'm trying to get drunk as a skunk swinny liquor will do cali and i kind of at one point in my life would have thought it was like a dope ass idea but i get it if you look however you want potty if you can push it and be responsible and girls are getting naked for you who am i to judge that you know it, uh, it's just <laughs> Good for you you know it's just more i suppose with the information of today i look at it differently scoob's drunk as fuck he's not lying been sipping all night he's prime drunk and stupid but to lose it did i say i'm stupid old job it i'm like okay so he's pretty much smashed it's pretty good it's pretty far monoxide comes in and then i was like is that is that monoxide is that twisted because you know what's you know what's crazy about the spotify version there's only one feature on the album according to spotify oh yeah so it's like a mystery you're not you're not getting announcements (laughs) when you're just listening to the album guess what it is i guess tonight's the end that we blame it on the dixie cup it's barely six o'clock and i'm already feeling super drunk and like my spirits my shirt keeps lifting i'm like that's like three verses about the exact like they definitely stuck to the theme on this one we get drunk their clothes come off i'm like you got it okay and then so. does, does madrox do it yep pour me up i do what i want with my dixon club keep it hundred proof till i'm drunk and stuff because i'm over at the bar trying to love a slut because i like to cut and i put it in her butt till i bust a nut that does sound like a really good time though it really does it does sound fun um yeah they're getting drunk and fucking okay yep, so thematically much. no doesn't i don't know how to comment on it without sounding like a dick but it's fucking fun. And if I were to go out and try to get laid tonight, this is the kind of song I'd want to hear. So 4.75. Cool. Um, I mean, I think that that's exactly like what this song is. It's for like somebody that likes this particular sound because this one definitely sounds more oh, new like... Oh, 
Yeah. From like the sound, it, I, I it sounds to say very that. like so, heavy metal ish <laughs> and like or new metal, whatever. I don't know what the difference so between old and new metal is, but it sounds like metal. New metal is um, when it, like you take metal and you throw in some hip hop and shit and you fuse it all up and it creates that okay. sound. Like Linkin Park could be new metal or anything that ends up having some rap on it and some kind of fusiony sounds. Okay. Like Crazy Town's Butterfly would be, in my opinion, a new metal song. A really sh- not great example of the genre. Corn would also be new metal. I mean, again, that doesn't really help me. But anyways, um, <laughs> it's like something like I don't know what to compare it to because I don't know that kind of music, but it sounds like something that would be like that. So that makes sense. Um, and this is like you said, it's just about like drinking a lot, uh, sort of like a party sort of song. Um, but not like a, a like a club song, like maybe like something you would listen to like you know, in the car, on the way to like the bar, like something that's gonna like hype up all of you and your your tough guys. Um, so this is much more of like a, a bro song, like a guy song. Not a not a bro song, because I think a bro is a little bit more like dancey. So this is more like a I'm a man song. Um, so this is <laughs> a man that likes to drink and party and have a good time and listen to heavy metal music. Uh, and intercourse with anuses. Sure, and all of that. So, I mean, if you're into this kind of sound, then you will probably like this. I really did. Um, it's not necessarily my sound, well, sound but like I said, this is sort of like the, the heavier kind of part of the album. So good. Um, so I gave us a 4.3 on 5. Man, it's just, I forgot how good the beat was until you brought that up. The beat <laughs> is so fire. It's well, such I mean, a I great feel like track. that's like the pretty significant part of the song. But then it, the next track just jacks the vibe, flips it in a new mm-hmm. direction, Absolutely. goes in a whole different way. A whole different place. A16, boys! Uh, Abu maybe Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Well, yes, Abu Dhabi is really rich. It is worth pointing out that part of it is slave labor. When these rappers make these songs, can we just point out Abu Dhabi's rich on slave laborers and stuff. It's kind of scary and bad and we shouldn't talk about it maybe. It's just it's just a weird reference. Like Buster Rhymes did Arab Money and it was a bad song to me or P Diddy or whatever it was. Okay. I like Arab Money. I was like whatever. And then this is just like, "Oh, we're going to take a Middle Eastern sounding sample, almost cliché like, throw it on in and go, "Look at me, I'm on my Abu Dhabi." Abu Dhabi. I just think it's one of the worst fucking pun things people made. Like, yes, Arab money is some serious money. It really is. Yep. One of the the Saudi Arabia companies decided to go public because they wanted to trade on the stock market, and it's like worth more than like fucking everything in the states. <laughs> but like, that's the thing is these companies aren't tracked by us, so we don't actually know how wealthy they are and shit. So when you say Abu Dhabi money, it's some serious shit. And I'm yep. not even trying to hate like that. It's just. I hate the idea of this Arab money crap. Like, it was such a stupid fucking... Well, it's like oil money, right? So it's all, like, that's kind of what it is. And yeah. They're all kings and But it's some and stuff. crap that the mainstream did several years before this song, and it was kind of boring then, and hearing this track just felt like that Buster Rhymes, Puff Daddy song, whatever. Uh, I don't remember the name. I'm Googling it right now. But what did you think about this one? Um, well, I mean, exactly like you mentioned, it definitely has that sort of um, Middle Eastern sort of um, inspired beat to it or sample in it. Um, and like they're they're making money either in Abu Dhabi or they're rich like that city. Um, and I think that, you know, it could also just be both. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting because, I mean, it is like a new city and it's blowing up and like there's a lot of money there. Um, that, like, the Western world kind of, like, as you mentioned, doesn't really know about or, like, doesn't know, isn't involved with, I think is more, I think Western people are more, like, "Mm, not so sure I want to work with them kind of situation. But anyways, um, I like some of the lines in this song. uh, Moving, like, excuse me, you must be from Ireland because every time I see you, my penis is Dublin. That was one of the most like, standout lines. Are in the you? Album. I was like, okay, okay. Uh, I thought that was like pretty clever, can, honestly. Can we point out that the funny. Irish accent might have that effect? Yes, but for girls. Oh, I'm saying an Irish <laughs> lady hear a talk. It's like, mm, 
Mm-hmm. I feel like Keep if you're on. from Ireland, you have like a great advantage. Like you're just gonna get laid if you I go to any place that isn't Ireland. The Scottish accent mm-hmm. when I throw it out same there. Same thing. Same thing, really. But the, if you have an accent that is, but that the is rest like, of the British accents not as good. Mm, maybe the Welsh. I don't. Can't nobody, really nobody, them. the fuck Wales is. They're just, they're just. It's farmers. a real country. I know. I bet. <laughs> it's a real I, country. I, <laughs> it's basically extended England. No, but it's, it's like, like here's I all the farmers over here. I didn't actually here. realize that Wales was a country until like 2000. 12 and i'm like wales is a country then a couple of years later i realized there's two irelands <laughs> i'm like that's <laughs> how Ireland. bad i am at this global geography shit oh okay oh, okay maybe maybe we should get you a globe but anyways um this is like basically a fun hype party kind of a song and it's kind of wild like it's a lot of fun um another line i liked was uh but don't be a bitch like the grinch who stole christmas I thought that was nice. I needed to mention that we were in the month of December. Um, and also I feel like it kind of ties into like he's mentioning Christmas on like a song about Abu Dhabi. And so like you wouldn't necessarily like they don't necessarily celebrate Christmas in Abu Dhabi. So I think that that's kind of an interesting thing as well. But it also probably just fits the rhymes and it's a unique line. So I appreciate all of that. So apparently the 816 boys aim to be a joke making fun of mainstream artists and shit. So maybe there's a bit of satire to this song. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, Arab sure. Money did come out in 2009. Okay. That's cool. Um, anyways, and, and that's it. That's pretty much like all I have to say about this song. Um, there was sort of like a weird ending, but it works like on like the album because of like the way it flows kind of into like the next song so it's sort of like it doesn't really fit this song but it's like you know instead of just putting you know a 10 second uh, like whatever skit song they just kind of like tack it onto the end so i always appreciate that even though it does kind of feel a little bit weird but it works with the whole album so this one is fun and catchy and it has like kind of like something that will just get stuck in your head a little bit so i give this a 4.4 on 5. i mean Overall, like, it's just kind of airy. And now that I guess it can kind of takes like a satirical tape take on pop music, I guess, because it just sounds like, hear me out, you know, those songs that put hip hop into a state of mayday where they were all about trying to make money mm-hmm. and stuff. Yep. They sounded a lot like this one. Now, yeah. I don't, again, I don't know if it's meant to be satire, but it's not obvious satire to me. Unless that person on Genius had written that comment and annotation on Chris Calico's lyric, I wouldn't have realized that that was the point of an 816 voice. Like, it was just lost on me. Okay. You could say, you should have Googled that. And I'd go, why would I Google that? Why would I Google is 816 boys satire? That's a thing you wouldn't think to Google. That's fair. Um, anyway. So pull up in a 96 whoop de whammy. It went to six boys got that Grammy. That's a response apparently to the joke song Areolas and all that other shit. Like, whoop, Areolas. Yeah, that's right. Tech Nine <laughs> and his people taught okay. me what an Areola was because I did not realize it. And then I started paying attention to the various size differences of Areolas that exist out there. Mm-hmm. Great. Anyway. My baby mama's told me that she can't stab me, rolling up in hella boom, screaming like a banshee, get that Arab money to Abu Dhabi, keep a hand on me in case they try to rob me. Blah. Lyrically, it's fine. There's not, it's, it's fine. It's just flossy. The video's all right. It's fine. The beat's kind of whatever. The chorus is whatever. Like, I feel like this song is more like one where if I was real drunk right now and I had just filled up my Dixie cup and gone through the last experience of the last song, I would be in a very different place with this, but like not drunk me doesn't feel the same way. Um, then Cut Calhoun does the next verse, and he does the awesome penises from Dublin line, which I really liked. I felt like he was a little, he he brought a little bit more fun with the lyrics there. Uh, MVP check person two years in a row check that was uh, because he was voted MVP at Strange two years in a row, I guess, uh, and that was what the genius told me. A Wayne verse check well. Tech got it because Tech Nine got it. Wayne Verse and is on Tech Nine is on the Carter Four, so yeah, hates the mainstream, right? Yeah. Abu Dhabi, I'm good. All I need is a check. Money, family, royalty, most of all is respect, and I like that because it shows some dope ass old school principles. And there's Max Zilla, he's all right. Um, he says that Christmas line. Overall. Uh, he says, wishing the Abu Dhabi is like wishing a person would. I can't be Abu Dhabi means I can't be touched. If you got me Abu Dhabi, you got me fucked up. And I'm like, I think you're taking this 
meaning of what Abu Dhabi is and really running with it to places where I no longer agree with you, Abu Dhabi is not a lot of the things he said it was to me. And then he does something I thought was amazing. Woo, 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 woo for the family. I got the Fago over there. <laughs> I keep the Fago over there. You know what it is. Whoop, whoop, indeed. Uh, sh- shake, sh- shake your ass, hottie. I can support that message. Want to see a hands up in the party while you're shaking your ass. A very lovely visual. Then Tech 9 does like the fucking worst flow. On the one hand, I like it because like it's extremely different and showcases a level of versatility for what Tech Mind can do. But Abu Dhabi, or whatever the crew he pays, nah, he die, whatever. Yehu, cause we was happy. Hum da la la la, love my skrilla la la la, some la la. Yes, and I was like, what are you doing, Tech? This is a really <laughs> weird flow. I don't think I gave it any kind of justice because I can't remember it that well except thinking this is some fucking weird shit that stands out. And I feel like Tech 9 is the least impressive on this track, all things considered. Um, I get it at 4.35. Like, it's a fun jam. And if I was a little smashed right now, I'd probably be, like, telling Bonnie to shake it over that Abu Dhabi stuff. Mm -hmm. But then she'd hit me because (laughs) that's not the world I live in. So 4.35 on 5. All right. And we're about halfway through now because the first one was a skit and there were eight, uh, 17 tracks. So that leaves eight and eight. So we're going to we're gonna get ready for part two. We'll get that to y'all as soon as we can. Mm-hmm. So thank you all for being here with us. We totally appreciate you watching. Feel free to leave comments. Tr- do try, it. Try not to be too mean to me. Don't do it. I mean, you can be, but I might answer at six in the morning or I'm a little snarky. Um, <laughs> Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Uh, like the video if you did, and we look forward to hearing from you. Special thanks to the patrons Ismail Gadamsi, Chris Prado, Jonathan Barnes, DJ Black Hurricane, Linda Williams, Coney Sparks, and Scribble, the new guy. So they probably do help us get a new camera, help us get on Spotify, and they're going to help us do a bunch of other cool shit in the mm-hmm. near future because they're awesome like that. So um, if you want to support us and you want to be like Ismail Gadamsi and tell us to review albums like he did right here and now, and they all are telling us. So we got some stuff coming up and what's cool about it is you kind of get a blend for each of their personalities the more albums they request yeah so we look forward to hearing all of that and you know what seeing what your albums you force us to review will be wink wink um i also make music myself you can check that out on this channel i also put on an album out on everything so hold on stefan roy the alternative grind let me know what you think i look forward to hearing from you thank y'all for watching and under real the classic outro moment Live long and prosper, everyone. (laughs) Bye, guys.